And we welcome you back, Tom Davis, together with Rick Dempsey, and joined by Madison analyst Mike Bordick. Mike, it seems like even though when the Orioles lose, they still play defense extremely well. They really do. I mean, they have some Gold Glover uh, infielders and outfielders on this team. Last year, of course, that historic defense, and they thrill fans every night. Manny Machado, check out his eye position, getting behind this baseball. Ball takes him into foul territory. The great feet, good setup, and of course that strong arm. But this is the play that really separates Manny Machado, creating that depth and able to get to the outfield grass and still let that ball go on target. Nice stretch by Chris Davis there. Wait for the ball. And here, Brzezinski thinks he's got it, but this is Gold Glover. Nick Markakis taking it away over the right field wall. There is nobody in the game that plays this right field here at Camden Yards as well as Nick Markakis. Of course, the experience here, but there's a lot of little nuances in right field that Nick Markakis is so familiar with. That high scoreboard, the angle there in foul territory, and of course, the short wall there that he just robbed that home run from. So beautiful defense in last night's ball game, just a lack of offense. That's why they couldn't pull it through. You know, Mike, you can talk a lot about almost every single player defensively. Every regular player that we have out there is a defensive star. J.J. Hardy, Chris Davis could have won a gold glove. You know, we already talked about Marcakis and Jones. Talk about the guys that come off the bench like Steve Pierce and do an unbelievable job, not only at first base, I was totally amazed, in the outfield. And then Flaherty, who goes around to all the positions, shortstop, third base, second base. These guys, and Lowe, David Lowe. I mean, these guys can play regular defensive on any ball club. They are outstanding defensive players. Well, this is what happens here. Uh, this team has really raised the bar defensively. And when they come in, extra players come in, they see what they have to do to really perform and keep up with this team. So when they go about their preparation in the off days, they go at it in game-type situations. I mean, David Lowe's been preparing himself. Steve Pierce has been phenomenal both at first base and in the outfield, not even talking about his bat. But Ryan Flaherty, anywhere you put these guys, it's their preparation that really separates them. And the way that this team has really raised the standard defensively, they have to try to perform at a very high level, and they are every time they're called upon. Now, from Orioles defense to Orioles starting pitching, and Wei and Chen starts tonight. He's got an interesting number on the strikeout-to-walk ratio in Orioles history. He's got the second best of Mike Messina since 1954. That's about four and a half strikeouts to one walk in every one of his uh, starts. So when you look at Wei Yin Chen right now, Rick, he pitched real well against Oakland in his last start. I did what? Wei Yin Chen pitched oh. real well against oh, Oakland. Oh, yes, he did. I mean, you know, he stays out of the middle of the plate. You can see yeah, at times the ball is up in the strike zone, but he does manage to somehow not get hurt most of the time with a long ball. You can see he's get the high strikeout. This, you know, isn't what you'd like to see out of Wei and Chen most of the time, but when you're throwing your off-speed pitches over the plate, your changeup and your curveball, you're going to get away with an occasional high fastball in the zone. The Oakland A's, who have an outstanding hitting ball club, too, had a very tough time trying to figure out where Wei and Chen was going to throw his two-strike pitches. So, I mean, he gives up some hits when he doesn't hit his targets outside inside up and down he gives up more hits than innings pitch which is makes him vulnerable but the thing that makes him a survivor is the fact that he doesn't walk people he doesn't put a lot get a lot of free passes and therefore you've got to get sometimes three hits in an inning to score a run off him now mike when you look at the orioles pitching right now i mean chen goes tonight and you, you saw bud Norris the other night go eight innings and in addition to that last night chris Tillman only gave up one run over six is the pitching starting to get into a better groove getting later into ball games now well you hope so i mean really Really, that's what's been hurting them uh, in the early part of the season. But it's been a roller coaster ride for this rotation, you know, and uh, they've had good weeks and they've had some bad weeks. But it looks right now like right now they're really starting to settle in. Um, they're getting that competitive fire. And, and I think we've seen that from Wei and Chen in his last couple starts. You know, this drive and, and that desire to win ball games, wanting to go deeper in ball games. Chris Tillman really battled through last night's game. Bud Norris stepped up and was outstanding. And I think this uh, rotation is starting to come together. I think they hope that Jimenez has that second half like he had last season with Cleveland. And uh, these guys are really studying the game. They're pushing. They understand what they have to do as far as being more aggressive in the strike zone. That's why Wei and Chen's having so much success. He's limiting the walks. He's aggressive with all of his pitches. And you saw it from Bud Norris the other night. Command of all three of his pitches. And he keeps hitters guessing throughout there at bat. So uh, I think this tide is turning. You hope it's turning. They're going to need them to really turn it around if they want it to make it to the promised land the postseason, of course.